In this update, we've got a split flow setup that's starting to emerge. So let's really expand the view this afternoon and break down the details for you and start off with the jet stream because here is your southern jet stream that's starting to get a lot more pronounced that's going to be feeding off that some of that Pacific moisture. At the same time, we're going to have a pretty significant trough that's going to be diving in off the west coast. That energy is going to pull in the middle of the country and eventually create some showers and thunderstorms. And actually, some of those actually could be on the severe side. We do also have some more instability off the Florida coast. That's going to be meeting up with the trough that could, once it gets offshore of the Carolinas, uh, develop a little bit of area low pressure center. That's expected to lift northbound up the I-95 corridor, bringing the, that area into some heavier rains as, as well as some higher wind gusts. Out in the tropics, we do have newly formed Tropical Storm Nigel out here into the open waters of the Atlantic. Fortunately, all guidance actually has this lifting northwest and eventually recurving going out to sea. We have another area of instability that also has a 40% probability could be forming into Ophelia in a couple of days. That's also going to be lifting northwest bound as well. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel and I would love to reach 200,000 subscribers by the end of the month and you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content. So let's take a look at the setup going forward, headed into Monday, because we do have our pesky little ridge that's been kind of hanging out in Mexico that's gonna be trying to come back, bringing those 90s back with it, bringing all those you know well above average temperatures. At the same time, we've got that area of that trough that we highlighted that's going to be off the Carolina coast, meeting up with this instability that could actually form an area of low pressure. There's that more significant trough that's going to be diving in off the west coast as well. So if you can take a look at the, at the vorticity map, you can actually see it a little bit better because here's the area of low pressure center that's going to be moving across the Ohio Valley and eventually heading out into the Carolinas. Once that gets offshore, that actually could develop an area of low pressure. Here's the first low that's going to be off the California coast, bring in some cooler conditions from there. But this is the more significant low pressure center that's going to be diving down into Oregon as well as into Northern California and really drop those temperatures as well. That's the same energy that's eventually going to be pulling across the middle of the country through the Rockies that's eventually gonna be setting up some severe storm. So going into Monday afternoon, it looks to be in about 24 hours from now, we could be looking at an area of low pressure center coming off the Carolina coast, trying to get its act together. I don't think it forms any toward or a tropical characteristics or anything like that, but we do have a little bit of a low pressure. And if this was the winter time, this, this would actually probably be classified as a nor'easter. <laughs> so we do have an area of low pressure that's going to be setting up shop and going to be lifting northbound. So with it, it's going to bring some instability, some higher wind gusts as well, and going to be bringing rounds of showers and thunderstorms and impacting m m some of these areas into New England and especially eventually heading up into, into Maine. There's the cooler shot, complements of that trough going to be coming in. Those areas are going to be 5 to 10 degrees below average and then the middle of the country we've got that pesky you know ridge of high pressure that tries to come back and really heat up the middle of the middle of the country and then of course out west we've got that first trough going to be out west that's going to bring the first initiation of much cooler conditions over the next couple of days so here again on the vorticity map a little bit more pronounced on Tuesday as this area will be highlighted over New England and especially into Maine here. There's that first uh, short wave that's gonna be coming across with the area of low pressure off the west coast. That's gonna intermingle with the more active subtropical jet and eventually set up a dry line type setup. So out ahead of it, we're gonna have some very moist unstable air you got a lot of dry air right now but the, as the winds start to come around on monday monday uh you know evening going into tuesday things rapidly change in a big way so those dew points really start to elevate 
back into into the low to mid 60s as we have a kind of a, a classic dry line setup that likely will unfold as we get into a, a you know Tuesday afternoon Tuesday evening time frame and some of those actually could be some big time hell producers could really set up shop around five six o'clock in the afternoon in and around uh, the Lubbock region going into Oklahoma City you know some of these areas could actually be getting some some two inch or larger type hailstones up to tennis ball size hail likely not out of the question with some of these and they will try to lose its instability so it's more it's a it's a timing aspect it, so it's really about from from four to eight so for, in that window it could be a bumpy ride and as they get closer to tulsa and as they get closer to the dallas Worth area they should start losing their instability and losing their some of those supercell characteristics and start fading down but you could be left over with some of those downburst winds as those storms start to collapse if we look and kind of zoom in and what the radar could actually look like around five o'clock on your tuesday afternoon we see the initiation off the dry line of these supercell thunderstorms and where that separation is these little renegade storms some of those could be some of those larger hailstone producers as well and eventually i think it's going to transfer into more of a higher wind threat so it's going to initiate as a, a more of a damaging hail threat and then as they shift and move move uh, more or less southeast bound they will they will uh, start to merge together and you know i guess you know lose some of their instability and start to collapse and when they do that'll be into the form of microburst into downburst winds as well so and then i think they will be fading out once they hit for the most part the dallas warworth area and especially in east east texas you're likely not going to be expecting much of anything from that from that system but let's take a look at the big picture because here's the here's the uh, overall setup on the atlantic side there's the remnants of lee that's what uh, impacted portions of Maine and Nova Scotia and then there's the recurve with Nigel so all indications this is expected to recurve kind of well out to sea but I show you the eastern Pacific because we're starting to see the beginning stages of kind of a pivotal turn and some of these storm systems could start to actually recurve itself right so we're going to be starting to eye some of this uh, Pacific these Pacific storms because as we get deeper into sep September, and as of course, at definitely going into October, we're gonna start to see the transition as the more pronounced subtropical jet stream. And some of that energy will actually get pulled up in that subtropical jet stream and be lifted in to the desert Southwest, lift into the Southern Plains as well. So here is the setup as we go into Thursday. So you've got uh, the, you know, really warming up in the middle of the country, all these areas in the Southern Plains, the middle of the country, especially at up heading up into the upper Midwest, uh, the Northern Great Lakes and into Canada, plenty warm for this time of year. There's the significant trough and there's the storm uh out here into the eastern pacific so that's the setup on thursday and it's, you can actually see a little bit better on on the vorticity map uh with that area of swirl if you call it uh underneath that it's got its own cold cold core right i mean underneath that some of those temperatures could drop 15 20 degrees if you're right under the center of that area of low pressure but this is going to be you know fairly fairly potent for this time of year as this is going to be swinging across the middle of the country and that's going to feed up with the more active more pronounced uh, southern jet stream and you got plenty of fuel out ahead of it right with those well well above average temperatures so on the satellite picture you can start to see the emerging recurve right you've got the the storm out here in the eastern pacific so instead of heading westbound it's starting to starting to lift a little bit further north and as it gets further north it's going to be caught up in that in that subtropical jet stream and that's going to shear the tops off of it but it's going to be spreading some of that moisture into the center part of the country and that's going to meet up with these vorticities and that's going to be elevating this activity producing some heavier rains and more showers and thunderstorms and have all the instability across the the north central plains regions 
as it starts to get fed for a much more active subtropical jet and the trough is gets really pronounced as we head into the weekend so we could be looking at another you know high wind threat across these regions as those isobars really starting to tighten up across portions of nebraska getting into kansas and the portions of western oklahoma the texas panhandle that area looks to be a favorite area for continued portions of severe storms but also continued areas of heavier rain really throughout the week so if we zoom in and what that may look like over the course of seven days you got the polar jet to the north right so that feeds feeds moisture into montana feeds it into you know the dakotas getting into minnesota and then you have a more active pronounced subtropical jet stream and that's going to be meeting up with these series of troughs in the middle of the country into the north central plains region so areas into oklahoma into into kansas into, into nebraska into iowa into missouri those are going to be your favorite areas they start to fade out as they get further south because we've got the ridge right it's a fight going on we got the ridge trying to come back in from mexico and that's going to put the squeeze on anything that tries to push further south as it runs into that drier type air atmosphere but it's completely the opposite once you go north of the border here into oklahoma where the atmosphere is a lot more unstable and it's and uh, you know and you're going to be more in line with these series of cool fronts going to be impacting that region and there's that low pressure center that could actually write up the eastern seaboard so if you're on the coast you're going to be feeling the effects from this system if you're inland you're not really going to be experiencing much of anything from that area of of low pressure but there's the fight right there's that ridge of high pressure trying to come back in mexico so there's the fight coming on you got the trough coming in off the west going to meet up with the more active subtropical jet stream and then right in the middle of the country that is where everything really kind of sets up shop into the into the middle of the country and all the heat too right so it's going to be a warm warm week ahead across the middle of the country with the fight coming in from uh from mexico with the with the ridge of high pressure and then those are going to be elevating those temperatures well above average especially up here in canada there's the trough that's setting up across the southeast and portions of the east coast and of course we have that other trough off the west coast so those areas keep you know more or less average to below average for over that seven day time frame and there's the tropics right so here is the overall setup over the next 10 days and some of the ensemble guidance there's the low pressure that's going to be traveling up the eastern seaboard like i mentioned i don't think it actually takes on tropical characteristics but there's the leftover amargo just still sitting and spinning out here and then there well which is now Nigel, it's also ex actually expected to become a hurricane, but then there's that area low pressure too that could be Ophelia, and that's gonna continue northwest bound, and this will this is over a seven to 10 day time span, so we'll actually have to watch this one, you know, as we get past that seven day time span, but as we get deeper into September, right? So if we zoom in to some of these ensemble guidance, we start to make the appearance of the start to the recurves of these eastern pacific storms so you start to get you know as these come off the central american coast they're going to have that low pressure center but it's going to be caught up in that subtropical jet and it's going to be feeding into that moisture so here's the setup potentially by the end of end of september where areas of low pressure will be feeding into the monsoonal flow around the four corners regions and I think as we get into October, this will be arcing further into the Southern Plains and actually are going to be eventually likely arcing back into Texas as this gets more pronounced as we get deeper into the month of October. So guys, I appreciate you guys watching. I do like this video. Definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update. Fire protect you for and after storm.